Hi, I'm Dr. Jean Fourry, and today we're talking about visual perceptual skills. These are crucial skills needed for reading. Reading is a conversation between a reader and an author. It's our kind of remote control to faraway places and long ago times, as given in this quote by Dolores Hiskes. So the writing on the page needs to be interpreted and we need to make sense of what is written there. We have to associate this two dimensional symbols, the written thing, the graphemes on the page, we have to associate them with the spoken word. And they are sophisticated skills that are needed in order to decode what we see on the page and make meaning of it in order to be able to read. In foundation phase learners, children are learning to read. They are acquiring literacy. And once they have acquired this ability to decode the, the text, then they start reading uh, they, they start reading in order to learn subjects. So this implies that we have to be able to read with insight and comprehension and our reading must be fluent and quick and accurate. We know that there are unique areas in the brain associated with reading, the Broca's area, the parietotemporal lobe and the occipital temporal lobe. All these areas work together and function as a unit for us to be able to decode what we see and make meaning of the words that are in the text. Today we're talking about visual perception in detail. And when we think about perception, we are looking at how we interpret and categorize information. The information is gathered by our senses. So we have our sense of hearing and our sense of smell and touch and our visual, hear, our visual sense. The quality of the input that comes in through our senses will determine how this is processed in our brain. So the first thing that we do as teachers, remedial teachers, learning support educators, is that we check to see that the child's eyes are working, that their visual acuity is accurate, and we check hearing to ensure that the learner is able to hear the sounds of the language around them. And if we know that the eyes and ears are working, but yet the child is still having difficulty with processing the written word, with doing the schoolwork that's required, there might be difficulties in various aspects of perception. And we know that your attention, your concentration, your ability to focus on a task is also influenced by um, your perception and perception influences our ability to concentrate. When we look at visual perception in detail, we know that vision is something that needs to be taught. We do not all interpret the sensory information that we see through our eyes in the same way. If you look at this picture, there are two different images that you can create from the lines on the page. You can see an old man or you can see a person staring into the distance. So visual perception is taking what we see and making meaning of it. As Winnie the Pooh, the little character in the book said, to the uneducated, an A is just three little sticks. 
and that's quite what it is. Two, li two diagonal lines and one line going across. So we need to make meaning of the things that we see around us, in the world around us and in the texts that we read. We can use illusions. Illusions teach us that we have this ability uh, to make meaning of what we see, but that ability is not constant and it is not true for everybody. We all see things slightly differently. We give meaning to what we see and this meaning is learnt. We have to learn about the alphabet and the meaning behind the words. As we engage and develop our senses, they become more, more accurate and more um, in tune with the world that we live in. And children can be explicitly taught to hone these perceptual skills. We're going to have a look at some of those skills in a little bit more detail. So if we look at another illusion, here are some black and white lines on the page. If you look at this uh, drawing in one way, you might see a little rabbit. And if you look at it slightly differently, you might see a duck. So depending on how you interpret the, the, the lines on the page, you can make two different meanings. There are other well-known illusions that illustrate this point. The muller lyre illusion has two horizontal lines and they are drawn parallel with arrows on the end. We ask people, are lines A and B the same length or are they different? And most people will say that line B is longer than line A. And that is because the arrows um, are pointing inwards and they make it look like that line B is stretched longer. But if you take a ruler and measure, you will see that those two lines are exactly the same length. The Ponzo illusion is also um, a way to show us that uh, uh, the way that we interpret the world tells us about how we draw things on, on paper. And these two lines, the two horizontal lines, um, look like they are not the same length. The um, the, 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 the one at the top looks like it's longer than the one at the bottom, but that is because the diagonal lines facing inwards are uh, tricking our eyes into thinking that this is uh, like a road going into the distance and we are, we have been trained in how to look at uh, things in two dimensions um, taking a three-dimensional world and putting it on two-dimensional paper. So these illusions show us that our sense of vision can be not always true um, and the things that we learn are influencing how we perceive the world. The first crucial skill for us as educators is ensuring that visual discrimination is, is well developed. I'm going to go through a, a couple of the dimensions of visual perception that we can assist learners with in school. And these are interrelated. They are not very um, clearly defined, but there are slight differences. So we're starting with visual discrimination, and this is the ability to differentiate the detail between objects um, and forms and shapes. 
based on the individual characteristics, their color or, or patterns, something about them that is slightly different. This ability um, of visual discrimination also relates to our ability to recognize an object and, and take an object out from the surrounding background that it is in. And that uh, we'll get to that one later. Uh, we often can see difficulties with visual discrimination when learners are reading inaccurately or spelling have difficulties and problems with maths, confusion of letters, uh, the B and the D is a common one. Um, uh, words that are mostly the same, but there might be one letter that's different, can be um, not seen differently. And then digits that are the same, like a six and a nine, they can um, not be clearly distinctly seen as different. And this also relates to various drawings. So there's some little drawings of animals, slightly, slightly the same, but um, there are differences and we need to see some of the fine detail differences in order to know that they are that they have different meanings. So visual discrimination can be supported by teachers encouraging observant behavior, encouraging learners to focus on the small details. There are lots of different worksheets and there are lots of puzzles that you can do with learners. Lots of things looking at where are things the same, where are they different, and playing dominoes with pictures or words, doing lots of matching of things, the animal with its silhouette, for instance, and playing lots of um, letter, number, shape, or word bingo type games where you're looking at things that are similar, but there is something about them that is different. So this is quite a nice worksheet at the bottom here. The learner puts a pig on the drawing that's the same as the one at the top, just, just differentiating the ones that are slightly different at the bottom. There are lots of different activities that one can do, ranging from simple to more complex, in order to assist learners with visual discrimination. Here are some examples of um, words. So if we look at the worksheet on the left, the word for is uh, written in different ways on the, the line across, and the learner needs to find the one that is the same, that is correct. We can do it with shapes. We can do it with patterns. We can do this discrimination exercise with letters, capital letters, um, alphabets, and, and numbers that are very similar and that often cause confusion so that we're carefully looking and, and training that ability of visual discrimination. Then this, uh, a crucial part of visual perception is visual memory. This is the ability to store in our short term iconic memory, the visual details of the stimulus that is seen. In reading, this is a crucial skill needed for sight words. Sight words are those high frequency words that need to be decoded immediately with spontaneous recall without being sounded out. So we often will, will be, become aware of a visual memory difficulty when there is poor sight word identification during reading. Reading is inaccurate and slow. Uh, comprehension is poor. Spelling is not good. Um, inaccurate copying of text from blackboards to the learner's book. So there are things to look out for that will um, assist us. You can do a quick screening by giving the learner, for instance, a, a little a picture on a card to look at with a little bit of detail and some 
um, spatial, orient spatial orientation. Um, so these, this flower and the insect are orientated in a specific way. And we say to the learner, uh, look at the picture for uh, three to four seconds, and then you turn this card upside down and you give them another card which has the same picture but in slightly different ways or there's some detail about it that's different and you ask the learner which is the picture that you were looking at and they need to point it out to you which one is correct so as a um, as a quick screening there are lots of these little exercises that you can do and make yourself sets of cards that are useful. When we know that learners are having difficulty with visual memory, we can give them lots of activities, such as looking at a picture and then asking them to draw what they saw. Um, let them look at the picture for a little while and then draw it. We can do it with um, animals, shapes, letters, numbers, words. We can have flashcards with the, the things on them and ask them to look at them and then to tell you what they were. We can hide objects underneath paper cups and different objects in different places. And then the learner must remember by having a look at it, which object was under which cup and where they saw them. And then trying to remember a difficult word for the week, every week to have a, um, a word that has a distinct shape and what that word looks like, what its spelling is like and what it sounds like um, can be an activity. Play variations of Kim's game. This is a game where you take a tray of objects, everyday objects, pens and pencils and an apple and so on. And you then ask learners to look at these objects and they can be objects, pictures, words, um, different things. Look at them for um, a, a period of time and you time them. If the learners are um, older, you can give less time and then you cover that those objects up with a, a cloth. Or, or turn that if it's on a card, you turn it around so they can't see it and then ask them to either say or write as many words or as many objects as they can remember. You can also play Kim's game by having a learner in the group or the teacher, then put your hand under the cloth and remove an object. And then when you open the cloth again, everyone must say which is the object that was taken away. So there are lots of variations and there are lots of computer um, generated games as well along this line, all of them assisting in visual memory. So there are also games that you can play, um, for instance, like this um, nonsense reading game where the teachers put a whole lot of sight words up on a wall and they are in um, they, then they get put into random orders, so there's no real meaning behind the um, sentences that are that are going to be read. But the learner has is having to remember the sight words, and you can use this for difficult words, maths concepts, um, any geography, history, whatever terminology needs to be learnt. Another component of visual perception is visual sequential memory. This is the ability to recall um, items um, that we've seen in a specific sequence or series. It must be in the correct order. And this is crucial for spelling because the, the letters on the page must be in the correct order for our spelling to be correct. We will know that learners have difficulty with this when they have difficulty, for instance, following instructions in a particular order. Uh, reading can be a problem. Spelling is definitely 
one of those as areas that gives us a good indication that there are problems with that learner's learning. And then maths. Maths has to be in, um, we have to get the order of the calculations and the order of the way that we write um, multiple digits down absolutely correctly. So visual sequential memory is crucial for all the activities at school. So you can give exercises such as this one. You show the learner a card which has got a sequence on it, like this is a sequence of shapes, star, triangle, circle, and, and rectangle. And then um, you, could you turn that over after they've had a look at it for a short time and then ask, show another whole set of cards that's got the same shapes but in different orders and ask them to tell you which order is the correct order. And so doing this activity, starting with uh, maybe if the learner's having real difficulty, you might start with two, two items and then work up to three items, four and five. Um, mostly people can't remember more than about five or six items in a row, but we certainly do want learners to be able to remember more than three. And um, for spelling, the better your uh, visual sequential memory is, the better you become at spelling as well. So there are lots of activities that we can do to assist learners. We can do copying of patterns um, in a particular order. Patterns must be, the, the patterns must be done. Um, there is uh, yeah, activity over like the making of a caterpillar over here where the learner is given all of the pieces of the caterpillar cut out as shapes and they have to put it in the correct order uh, threading exercises putting beads on a on a thread in a pattern that's given a predetermined pattern in an order that's given or copying an order of other beads um, there are board games such as sequence where items have to be put in the correct sequence using cards, pegboards, anything where there are orders of patterns that need to be followed. And this is crucial for developing that sequential memory. Another aspect of visual perception is this ability to understand the visual space of objects. It's the space around the person, but also the relationships between objects. So knowing that a toy is inside a box or that something is underneath the table or on top of something behind, um, on the right side, in front of, uh, these are spatial orientation concepts and often learners with learning problems have difficulty with these. Reversal of letters, um, confusing a five or an S and reversing them, that is an indication of spatial relations. Confusing left and right and bottom and top and back and front, uh, learners can have difficulty with that. Poor spacing of work on the page is an indicator of problems. And inconsistent letter writing sizes. Um, writing or reading in the wrong direction and on the wrong page uh, are indicators. And then serious difficulties with maths. Maths is a, a crucial one for uh, getting space correct. The hundreds, tens, and units columns must be in the correct place. Geometry and measurement and um, things that are uh, shapes, orientated, angles, uh, all these things in maths particularly often have crucial spatial um, relationships between them. And these can be an indicator that the learner is having difficulty. We can support learners with lots of different activities. 
here is a box called Tricky Fingers. It is a box covered with, um, it's got holes at the bottom and marbles inside. And the marbles uh, are covered with like a Persfix covering. And you move the marbles around from underneath and they have to be moved into the patterns of the stimulus card. There are really nice activities such as brainy blocks, which are little shapes that come in different colors and patterns, little plastic shapes. And the learner needs to put the shapes in the colors and the patterns of the stimulus cards. The same with um, Audi blocks, also uh, little dimensional blocks to follow patterns with. Using um, the arrow chart, the arrow chart is a chart of various different kinds of arrows that show left, right, up and down. And here's a little girl using her arms to follow the, the arrows on the arrow chart. And we know that using your whole body um, is crucial for understanding spatial relations. And using sticks and fingers for pointing to things that assists with uh, problems with handwriting can be assisted with having uh, dark and um, light uh, lines on the page to assist learners to write within the particular lines. This all assists with spatial orientation and lots of different activities of tracing so that learners are learning to work from left to right and learning to orientate work on the page. So these are all activities with assisting with writing. With the reading, the, uh, it's useful to have a window strip. This is, you can just make one yourself you, or you can buy them little plastic, um, like trans colored plastic transparencies and a little strip is cut out of the line in the reader. And the, as the learner reads, they move it down and that um, trains the eyes to stay on track and to read from one line to the next line without getting distracted and moving and jumping around on the page. Um, a crucial element of our visual perception is the ability to differentiate figures from ground. So the figure is some item that one you want to lift out from the background that might be very busy and full of lots of things. And we know that learners have difficulty with figure ground when they are losing their place, when they're reading from books or blackboards, difficulties following directions and doing um, coloring in activities or follow the dot activities. Uh, and answers are incorrectly numbered when they're doing tests, jumping around. So difficulty with, with focusing and concentrating on and, and seeing the figure inside the ground. And there are lots of worksheets and activities to do to improve this particular skill. For instance, this one here, we, there's animals and cats and dogs that need to be picked out from the squiggly lines all over the place. And shapes, giving learners different colored pencils and then they must find the shapes within the pattern, which is a busy pattern. And there are lots of different ways to do this. Here is a lot of objects um, and you can play I spy games, looking for objects on this, the charts. The charts can be simple or more complex. I spy can be played with objects in the room. Um, and with all sorts of shapes and forms and the very popular Where's Wally games um, and looking for um, a particular little character or um, a particular little item in this fishing game. 
and to, to lift it out of the busy background. So figure ground is crucial for perceptual skills. Another perceptual skill is form constancy. This is the ability to understand that certain shapes have constants, constant uh, meanings um, regardless of uh, some differences and variations. So if you look at the G, um, sometimes the, the font changes. So it might be a different font um, if it's um, on a computer or if it's a handwritten font. The G is, it still is a G and we, this, this can cause confusion, but it is still a constant form. Um, so struggling learners who are struggling to identify the same letter in different fonts can be a problem with, with this, this ability to understand that, that form is constant, that has a constant uh, meaning, it's still a G, even though it's slightly varied. Of course, the B, D, P, Q problem is, um, is, is one of those that's got to do with the constancy of the, of the form. Um, it's the same kind of shape, but, but we are changing the orientation of that line around the circle and it's changing the meaning. Um, so the way you put the line makes it a B or a D or a P or a Q and that is crucial for learners to understand that, that those forms are distinctly associated with the spatial orientation that they are in. And there are lots of activities that we can do to assist learners with, with this constancy problem. And that is to look for lots of different fonts and you can cut them out from newspapers and magazines and print them out from your computer. Um, and then ask learners to post all the A's in the little box for A and the B's in the little box for B or to um, stick them onto a cardboard or put them on felt. Um, any activity where you are looking at the, the slight differences in the, the font, but they are still the same letter. So assisting learners with that. Here is a magazine font hunt, and the this is an alphabet that's been put together with various different um, cutouts from, from papers. Uh, this one has been done with the B and the D, and there's also a cool exercise here where you can use your hands to show you that if you make the, the circle with your left hand uh, or, and, and your right hand and your thumbs are up, that that makes a bed. If you turned your thumbs inside, the person wouldn't be able to sleep on the bed. So it's using, using the two hands to assist learners with that common problem of the B and the D differentiation. Form perception is a crucial element of visual perception, that ability to see uh, forms, all the triangles, for instance, in this little diagram, it's still a triangle, even if it's got different kind of um, shapes. So as uh, at the sizes and the angles are slightly different, but it's still a triangle. And then the, the squares, are small squares and bigger squares, and there are rectangles, long, thin, skinny ones, and fatter ones. So these forms are still the same form, but they have slight variations on them. All sorts of activities can be done around that. A crucial skill of visual perception is visual closure. So visual closure is the ability to look at something that's incomplete, a shape or an object, 
and we learn how to fill in our brains learn how to fill in the missing details in order to make meaning and to identify what we think might be there so for instance here are these little um, circles and with the little bits out of them it looks like there's a square there but there's no real square drawn so we are constantly trying to make meaning of our world around us and then we are developing this this ability to just our brains just close things and and make meaningful um, things so you could do closure exercises with letters half written words like these ones over here this example and by looking at there you kind of make sense of it and you know which words are um, are there because you've had lots of, of, of exposure to those words you've seen them many times so signs of poor closure difficulties for instance making a zero an o we're not bringing the two points of the o nicely together or an a um, inconsistent handwriting and very poor handwriting poor copying these could all be problems with closure that the person is having difficulty here are some examples of um, poor handwriting in order to um, we can we can do quick screening tests to see if learners are having difficulty with this give for instance picture one which is a square with some diagonals in it um, and ask the learner to complete the picture two so that it looks like the first one um, and see if they are able to draw in the lines in the pictures in the correct way for instance to get the oval and the square to complete each other so there are lots of worksheets of completing shapes worksheets uh, completing letters completing words and doing puzzles are a really useful way for learners to learn about visual closure and where things match and how they fit together and then our ability to analyze and synthesize visual stimuli that we see and with regards to reading visual analysis of words into their letters and their syllables prefixes and suffixes the words that we see on the page for i've given some examples there and when we analyze we are breaking things down into their components so for example um, the word flight can be fl and then it and we can break down the word education education and renew it's the ability to um, find syllables we can clap syllables and um, you can ask children to put dots on the syllables or to um, put stickers on them and then the ability to synthesize is that ability to put things back together so we can give parts of words and ask them to put them together to make um, full words like needle helicopter and this is all linked to our ability to sequence and um, all the other visual perceptual skills as well now a crucial element of visual perception relates to our motor activity so our eyes and our hands work very closely together when we are doing writing and handwriting but we also have eye foot coordination and general body coordination and our visual and motor senses are finely attuned together to work um, to allow us to move in the in the world 
and to do all the schoolwork that's required of cutting and drawing and handwriting and so on. So we can see visual motor integration problems in children who are seriously uncoordinated, very clumsy, um, falling over things all the time, have difficulty walking, uh, problems with cutting and drawing and handwriting and poor ball skills, inability to catch and kick and throw things and have very slow work tempo. And there are lots of activities around improving fine motor and, and gross motor activities and skills. So encouraging children to do a lot of sport, um, playing ball games, lots of fine motor coordination um, activities can be done using different media, tracing, lacing, uh, mazes, um, and different modalities. And please allow children to have a buddy, uh, if you know that they have real difficulty, who can provide some assistance to them in the, in the class. We might want to enlarge the text and have lots of space around the text. There are lots of activities around using shaving, different textures such as shaving cream and, and Play-Doh and jelly and sand and sandpaper. And if you know and are seeing that learners are having difficulty with this motor and visual motor integration that is very severe, please refer to them to an occupational therapist for assistance. So in conclusion, vision is our most used sense. And estimates show that we use about 80% of our vision for learning and for understanding the world around us. So most of our activities are mediated through our sense of vision. It is our dominant sense and it takes up uh, large amounts of brain energy and space. And vision is finely attuned to motor output. So what we see and what our hands do and what our bodies do are very closely linked. I want to just make one cautionary note here about the overuse of screen time. Please uh, be cognizant that we need to be protecting our sense of vision and the sense of vision of the learners that we teach and limiting screen time. We know that too much time focusing both eyes um, on the focal point in the middle of the screen is uh, causing strain and stress on visual systems. And in order to uh, allow your eyes to rest, please teach the 20-20-20 rule, which says that every 20 minutes we should be looking at an object at least 20 feet away for at least 20 seconds. And this is to allow the two eyes to come into a straight position and that lets the little muscles around your eye um, be a little bit more uh, relaxed and this allows the visual system to to keep recovering. If we see as teachers, if we see that learners have real problems with their eyes and we've done a whole lot of activities and exercises and they are still battling, please refer to optometrists and occupational therapists who can assist further. There are many, many different resources that are available for us as teachers. There are lots of websites and games, computer programs, and there's lots of um, worksheets and lots of little booklets. There are, there's lots of um, board games and things that you can get. 
But the most crucial thing is you, the teacher. The teacher can make just about anything that you need out of uh, scissors and the things that you have in your home, glue and rulers, and be creative. So all of these uh, visual perceptual difficulties can be assisted with uh, teaching aids that are easy and and freely available that you can make easily. So thank you very much for listening and good luck with all your further um, with your further assisting of learners who are having difficulty with visual perception.